Okay, this is my last re-record from the fiasco that was me recording three videos with no sound. This one goes over your assignment, and this is a comprehensive assignment. It should take you some time. Hopefully, it won't take you too much time, but it will hopefully test you and test your skills. And as you have questions come up, I urge you to go to the discussion board and use this first week, make sure this is available. Use this first week to lean into each other, to read through the instructions, to Try to comprehensively take into consideration the stuff that you've learned throughout this semester and put together something, begin to put together something in the form of a PowerPoint. Let me make sure that these are available. As you can see, I needed to go in and check one box to make sure that the discussion is available. Looks like it's available here too. All right, so if we go into the, well, go into this. I provided this to try to help you with some outline and some idea of how to put this thing together. And if it uploads or downloads to my computer, We'll talk about it. Psychometric norming study. And so what I want you to be aware of is like, like I did for those of you that have had me for DSM, I want you to be aware of the, the sources for psychometric validity, psychometric norming data. And so psychometric norming and psychometric testing happens in the context of psychological studies. And typically what researchers try to do is come up with their own way of measuring a certain psychological construct and then compare it to other pre-established, generally professionally accepted ways of measuring that same construct whether it be holding it, holding it up to clinical interviews done by trained psychologists where we are assessing people for a certain disorder found in the DSM, whether it be, I know the Beck's depression inventory, the BDI has been a, a standardized way of assessing depression for 40 years. So I'm going to measure my new depression scale up and over and against it and compare to C across multiple rating systems. If the clinical psychologists say that their person is depressed, meets criteria for moderate depression, and the Beck's depression inventory says, you know, according to their scaling, that this person meets criteria for moderate depression, and my new scale that I'm trying to norm to norm or, or psychometrically test and analyze to see if it's valid, I'm going to also compare it against these other two measures. And if I have a high degree of reliability between those three, uh, I would argue above hopefully 0.85. Depression has nine symptoms and uh, it's it's been studied for a long time and I feel like we have a pretty good handle on that particular disorder as a profession. Hopefully it, it, it aligns with at least 90, you know, 85 to 90 percent of the time with other other ratings that try to do the same thing. Oftentimes, that's what you're going to see. You know, you'll see, OK, they're going to report reliability with these other, you know, these other measures. Is it consistent? you know, with 500 people, is it, does it consistently measure 85% of the time or higher, 80%, 80% generally is accepted. I would say depression. That's why I was hedging my bet toward a little bit higher number. Um, are they consistent 
And so that's a way that we establish validity. There are also other ways that we've talked about throughout the semester. I would go back and I would review our, our lectures and our, um, our time that we spent in the module where we discussed different types of validity. That would be a good time. You know, it would be a good time to go back and look at those notes. So what you might want to do in your slideshow, and I would, you know, please make sure if even if you're following this guideline that you're following those, that you're answering those questions that I went over into our week eight intro, wait, week eight intro video. Um, you know, you, you want a cover page, you want to go over and talk about what your psychometric instrument that you find is, is trying to study what the construct is what the subconstructs are, you know, if there are subscales measuring different things. How do you select this? Where do you go? Well, in my video that I prepared before that I spent a lot of time on, uh, I, you can go to Google Scholar. I'd say eventually you want to go there, but you could, uh, you could type in what are some validated measures of narcissism. I'll just put that in the Google search bar and see what comes up. And you can see that the most widely validated measure, and the reason I'm, learn, I'm leaning into Google is they do have access to Google Scholar with their search results. And you can see they come up with a lot of different scales for narcissism, the NPI, the NARC. Um, there's a few, actually, there were a few more that were included in the initial, um, if you go back and you watch the video of my other, uh, my other, uh, explanation for this assignment, you'll see that there are actually a few more that were identified in my other search, my other query, but you can go in and look for this in scholars. So I would say if, if you do that, you know, let's, let's highlight the, the name of the instrument. And let's go into Google scholar. Cause that's not just enough for us. And let's see why it's considered a valid measure. So I'm pulling up Google scholar. And now I'm going to put that inventory into Google scholar and see what comes up. Narcissism and empathy. Va validity evidence for the narcissistic personality inventory. Hmm, this looks pretty good, right? 1984, it's been around a while. Validity of the NPI in a psychiatric sample. That looks pretty good, published in 1984. It's like there are some criticisms that came about later on. We definitely want to pay attention to that. One of the things that has evolved since 1984 is our understanding of personality disorders. In fact, the DSM has changed the way that they classify personality disorders. There used to be uh, an access to diagnosis where personality disorders were listed along with uh, things like, and I'm using antiquated language, but mental retardation. Um, that's the actual language that was used in the previous renditions of the, of the DSM. So we go in and... Well, let's look at the, let's see if we can find self interpersonal correlates in MPI. It's from 95. Let's look at this one validity of a psychiatric sample. Let's find the PDF. Let's find the actual, hopefully, let's find the actual PDF for it. I don't know why that needed to know if I was human or not. Somebody scanned this in. The validity in a psychiatric sample, 50 patients. Hmm, there's the Milan clinical multi axial inventory. Co correlation between the MBI and narcissism scale, the MCMI, was about 66%. So about 66% of the time, you're coming up with a consistent diagnosis between the Milan and the M NPI. When classified into low and high narcissistic group, there is 74% agreement. <clears throat> so that's pretty good. Welcome to read through that. And you can see they're very quickly reporting correlations between. I, I would count this as a psychometric 
norming may not be the original one. It's very short. Oh my goodness. That's very short. Only four pages. You're not going to run into the, the very, uh, very many of these. Uh, the, the critique of that is there's only 50 patients. Uh, uh, this is from 84. I don't know if I'll have access for it because I'm no longer a student at Adams. In fact, it's given me an error. That's really uh, depressing for me because I had a lot more validation of a brief measure of narcissistic personality disorder. What is this? It's from NA, National Institutes of Health. And so it's published from International Journal Psychology 2020. Interesting. It's a newer one. It's from 2020. Here's a pretty good sample, 1,100 people in variance groups and sex, reliability, construct, and predictive validity. Interesting. So if you had, this looks like the full text article. This looks pretty promising. So if you want to use this one, again, my idea behind this is for you to find something that's going to be beneficial for you in your field and so that you kind of deeply understand, well, I use this all the time. Where did the idea come in science that we actually need to use this to measure this construct? So uh, again, there, there should be evidence out there for you to, you know, to lean into. One of the things that I encountered early on is I was given the task of giving <laughs> of assessing people with addiction disorders with something called the addiction severity index. I was like, Wow, that that seems really professional. It seems really like it'd be valid and reliable. And then, in essence, you go and you and you look at this instrument and it's self-report and it's clinical interview and there's all these variables. It actually has a, a pretty low. I mean, they they did a, a lot of trying to train people to to be consistent in the way that they provide and the way they go through and they score and the way they go through and they interview people. It's actually got a pretty low reliability, and I would argue validity to it because it's so reliant upon self-report and if you think about addiction people are not going to be always most times if they're in pre-contemplation stage are not going to be honest nor do they possibly even have the insight to give you uh information about their about their substance use disorder about their addiction disorder so oftentimes i would combine that after knowing that uh, you know my first year or two in the field professionally oh this may not be the best instrument i need a lot of other things to support the findings or refute the findings on the on the asi so if you use that test let's just look at that let's see what comes up i think that's an interesting mind experiment to see what comes up for that scholar interesting google Hmm. Not associated with Adams anymore, so I can't use you for anything. <laughs> Let's try Scholar again. There it is. So I might put in something like addiction severity index. You try to put in psychometric, because oftentimes there'll be like psychometric properties. Studies of the reliability and validity of the ASI. Psychometric properties. Oh, in Brazil. So let's try to make it for the, uh, uh, so let's try to make it for consumption in the United States. I know that's not, maybe not the most culturally sensitive thing to say, but you can get off the, off the trail if you're chasing things down in Brazil or Portugal or, um, you know, different countries. So let's, tr this is 2004. So it's, it's a rather, well, it's older study. You've got 13 pages here. Let's see what the inner rater and test, retest, severe and excellent to un <laughs> score. Scores vary from excellent to unsatisfactory. Um, one, one thing that I can tell you, there is a discrepancy between psychometric performance of the ASI and it's reported. Yes, I would agree with that. I would agree with that conclusion very much so. It says it's for debate. Um, and it's from Finland. I would agree with that in my own practice with the ASI. And 
it is a decent tool when a person's honest with you to to treatment plan. And that's honestly what most of this stuff is for is to uh here's addictions at 25. So you'd want to go through and and try to find psychometric properties variations. So this would be a good study. We don't have a full text article, but you need to find a full text article so you can actually assess this thing. So that would be one of the the challenges. And so you might even reach out to our library if you are, are struggling with this assignment to get some help. I'm going to pause there because I'm going on so long. The biggest thing I want you to take away from this week in our assignment is regardless of the referral source, whether it be self-referral, the client is just coming to you to just, I have all this internal motivation. I want to change. I need to know what's wrong with me. Help me. Give me a psychological instrument assessment to help me understand me so I can get better. Whether it's from a spouse trying to not, you know, get a divorce, whether it's from an attorney trying to, you know, what's my client need here, whether it's from a court of law, a judge that's, you know, like for instance, in many times I had assessments for for drug court or for the municipal court for Enid, you know, the city of Enid. You might be tempted to get into a rut and say, well, you need to sentence them to this. They need jail time. That's not the intent behind a psychological assessment. The intent behind a cycle, and yes, unless you're a forensic interviewer, uh, you, you shouldn't be a forensic interviewer if you are getting these referrals. These need to be framed and, and interpreted in such a way that you are contributing or helping that person's life. Now, if they are, um, you know, like, well, what in the case of somebody that hurts kids? Well, sometimes you need to take into consideration other people's lives. So, okay, so, so the, the most tricky one would be somebody that presents as antisocial, you know, this person. And then so as I'm writing that report, this person would most likely benefit from a very structured environment. Um, you know, I don't have the ability to, to sentence them to, uh, nor do I want to have the ability in, in my role as a psychologist, unless I'm for, maybe forensic. Again, I'm not, not teaching you all to be forensic. Uh, it needs to be those, this person can benefit from this, this type and this type of rehab, whatever it might be. So gang, I think that'd be my biggest takeaway for you is to be careful on how you report. Uh, I'm, I'm out of gas. I, I did these, this is my second time to do this. I probably didn't cover everything well enough. Try to work it out with the instructions. Try to work it out with the handout. Try to work it out with each other. If at, if at you know, last you're like, I just don't get this next Sunday, rolls around and it's time for that, you know, our, our week 15, reach out to me, email me and I'll do my best to get an answer to you. Um, otherwise, the, the, it is an, an online asynchronous course. There is something to go back and, and look at the materials to 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 lean into each other um and uh, that's that's at this point that's that's what we can do so uh, i wish you well um please reach out in next week if you have any questions remaining otherwise uh i look forward to what you'll present i hope this is helpful for you and what you do as a as a professional